everybody, Steve here, Deer Stuff and Things, back with part two of the um, search for the perfect baritone. And today, we're gonna be taking a look at two guitars, both from ESP LTD, and um, comparing them. I'll give you a little bit of information on them, just like I did on the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can go to it right there. Um, fine folks at Zounds have sent me these instruments to check out and to share some information with you. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first on the agenda is this jam right here. This is the ESP LTD seven string Phoenix baritone. Mahogany body, a maple cap on said mahogany body, a nice matte color all around, matte black, matte pick guard. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they did a maple cap. You can't see it, it's matte. Don't understand the point of that, but it's there and it's on both of these guitars, oddly enough. Either way, uh, Macassar Ebony fretboard on this 27 inch neck. It is a three piece maple neck that also shares that satin matte finish. So it's very sleek, feels good playing it. It is what they refer to as a thin U. Uh, and I would say that's accurate. It, it is 300 millimeter. Um, it feels about the same all the way down to the base here where you go to uh, you know, access anything in the higher frets. It has really good access all the way down. This is 22 frets. So on the back of the headstock, we have these lovely ESP tuning keys that are locking. They are not too terrible. Uh, I have had experiences with those uh, that they seem to be a little squirrely from time to time. But this uh, particular instrument seems very solid. So that's pretty cool. Getting into the electronics, we are loaded up with a Fishman Fluence Modern. We've got the active and passive voicing from our single volume knob. Uh, this is a Tone Pros Tunematic Bridge, and it is string through. That's really all that you need to know about this instrument as far as the specs go. Let's hear this guitar, and then I'll, we'll go to the other guitar after that. Up next, we have this jam right here, which is the EC-1007B from ESP LTD. That's a lot of words and noises that just came out of my face hole to explain to you that this is a baritone Les Paul shape. I like to generalize with these sorts of things. Features a mahogany body with a maple cap. Yet again, I don't understand the point of a maple cap on something that's solid and paint because you can't really see it. That being said, it has really beautiful binding there. If it'll come in frame there, or there we go. It's coming in a little bit. Uh, you can see that it's got three little lines of lovely binding. That binding also goes on to the neck, which is lovely. Um, speaking of the neck, it is a 27 inch scale baritone neck. Macassar Ebony on the fretboard, just like the other guitar. And in addition to that, it is also a three piece mahogany neck. I just realized that I said the other one was three-piece maple. It's not. It is also a three-piece mahogany neck. These guitars have very similar spec sets, aside from the obvious differences. Thin U on this one. It is a gloss finished neck, so some people may or may not like that. You can always, you know, sand it down if you didn't. Uh, it has the same but different colored, of course. Uh, lovely locking ESP tuning keys with some nice black and gold offset happening there. Pretty cool. Uh, got these racing flag inlays, which 
aren't really my jam, but they might be yours. A lot of people really love that because it's just a classy ESP design. And um, yeah, you know, let's talk about the electronics and the rest of the hardware. So getting into the electronics, we have two Fishman Moderns in gold. Uh, we have a volume for one pickup, a volume for the other pickup, tone, as well as the push-pull for the active passive voicings. On the Fishmans, we have the typical uh, three-way switch. Because you have the two separate volumes, you can do the typical Les Paul thing and two, you know, turn one down and one up, that sort of thing. You can get your Tom Morello on should you feel like doing that. I guess the biggest thing that I've yet to discuss is the Evertune Bridge. The Evertune Bridge is really what sets this apart from the other one, and it does the job. Now, I have mixed feelings on Evertune. I've had it installed on a few guitars, and I felt like it sucked the life out of my guitars. That being said, having played this guitar, my feelings might be changing on Evertune, because with this one, it's just there. Everything feels perfect about it. There was no fuss. There was not a lot of fighting back and forth with the instrument to get it working the way I want it to or to dial in the tuning. So maybe I've just had bad luck with them in the past. Either way, this has got one. Additionally, with this neck, which I did not mention previously, it is 300 to 400 millimeter compound radius. It doesn't feel that different than the other one, to be honest. Not much more to say about it, really, uh, as far as the specs. I'm sure you'd like to hear it, though. So like to hear it, here it goes. So now that you've heard both of these instruments as well as gotten to know the spec set of each one, I kind of wanted to give you my opinion on both of these guitars as 
well as give them the score, just like I did on the previous video. We'll start with the Phoenix. The Phoenix, honestly, is pretty similar to the SN1B in that it's just kind of a, a really simplified metal intended instrument. It's got a single humbucker, single volume knob. It's just sleek. It's built for, you know, getting right to the point. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the shape uh, may be something that not everyone enjoys. Um, I personally think it's pretty cool. It is a little large and unwieldy in person. Uh, that doesn't really bother me. Um, I've played it with and without a strap. I, and also uh, seen it played by other people. Uh, and it looks normal and natural on them when they're strapped up with it. Um, my only real point of contention with it is that it's hard to find cases for it. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, most high-end guitars don't come with cases anymore, which is a travesty. Uh, so it creates a bit of a difficult scenario trying to find a case that fits it that is not one that is specific for that instrument. And just to put it in perspective, ESP LTD makes a case just for this guitar, but you're also gonna be out about 200 bucks to accomplish that. Now there are some universal fit cases that may work for it. I have no experience with that. Um, but getting back to the guitar itself, I uh, will say the one major improvement between this guitar and the SN1B is that there was no play with the uh, bridge humbucker, which is the only pickup in the guitar. If you recall from the previous video, that other one kind of wobbled around and was unstable. This one is direct mounted to the body, so there's no movement, no issues there at all, so nothing really to trouble you there. Um, it is exactly what you would imagine it to be. It's very simplistic, unique shape, matte black. It, it kind of falls into that black metal territory that the ESP LTD stuff was doing there for a minute. Um, Honestly, overall, a fantastic instrument. Um, I'm going to give this one. I'm going to give it an 8.5. Uh, I, I think if it weren't for the body itself and the overall shape and size of it, I'd probably go, you know, 9 or so. Uh, but I, I would say that that might not be for everyone. And uh, also getting a guitar in that price range, which is around $1,000, by the way, and not having a case is silly, especially when it's something as unique in shape and size as that particular guitar is. So 8.5 on the ESP LTD Phoenix Baritone 7 string. All right, so up next we have the EC-1007B 7 string Baritone with an Evertune from ESP LTD. I feel like that was a lot of word vomit that just came out of me. Uh, but to give you my perspective on this instrument. It's similar to the last video in that one guitar has a single humbucker and a volume knob, the other one has a pair of humbuckers and some tonal variety. So the EC uh, shines in that it has a lot of tonal potential. You've got the two pickups with completely independent volumes and a universal tone. You have the voicings for each pickup. That is not independent, however, uh, so that is the voicings of both are controlled by the tone. You have a lot of that classic aesthetic and classic option set or feature set that may be uh, a little closer to a traditional Les Paul. I think that in itself is a pretty big selling point and that you're, you're gonna get some added variety with your tone and your ability to craft it as you would like. If you're someone who's using a single channel amp, a guitar like this or with that type of setup is really going to allow you a lot more um, tonal flexibility and dynamic uh, than you would have just from a guitar that's just a straight up uh, humbucker and a volume knob. That's not good or bad. I'm not saying that either one of these uh, guitars are good or bad. I think both these guitars are honestly pretty equal in my opinion, uh, especially in comparison to the previous video where the SN1B was a little bit of a lesser instrument for much more money uh, in this scenario, um, the EC is a little bit more money, but mostly because of the Evertune, and the Evertune itself is the shining star of this guitar. And when you're dealing with seven string and super low tuning, especially with that extended scale and getting into slightly thicker strings, that sort of thing, having something like the Evertune on it 
can really make a world of difference, especially in a recording or a live setting. I am fairly on the fence with Evertune. Uh, sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. Um, I'm leaning more on the side of love with this instrument, which is a good thing. Um, and it has kind of gotten rid of a little bit of the sour taste I had in my mouth about the Evertune, which is cool. Uh, not that that was its intention. I will say that when you're looking at this guitar in photos, it tends to appear a little larger than it actually is in person. Um, and maybe it is as large as it appears in photos, but the contrast between the Phoenix and it has uh, made it seem a little less so because the Phoenix is so large and unwielding. Unwielding is not fair. It, you can wield it. Wield it. Wield it with all your might. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, my only real critique of the EC is that it has a glass neck. Uh, I, I feel like it would be a cooler instrument and a much more playable instrument in the long run, especially on stage, at least for my taste, if it had a satin neck or just uh, a normal wood, like a natural neck and the, and the paint itself cut off, you know, right before that. Um, some people don't mind glass necks and they don't mind glossy finishes. I'm not a huge fan of that on necks. I find it to feel a little dummy, especially if you get sweaty. It just doesn't feel right. Or um, I don't know. I don't need to explain that. If you've played one that's glossy and you play one that's not, you know what the difference is and you know what you like. It's not my job to tell you what to like and what not to like. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to share the information with you, kind of give you my honest feedback as someone who's played baritone for a long time. Um, and I'm honestly going to give this one an 8.5 as well. Uh, again, if it had a case, it would get extra points. If it was not gloss on the back of the neck, it would be a solid 10. But yeah, that's the video. This is this is round two. Uh, I think it, it, in kind of in closing, if you were going to go for either one of these guitars, it's really specific to your use case. So if you're someone who just needs something to strip down metal machine, which I hate saying, uh, you could go with the Phoenix, especially if you like kind of oddball shapes. Uh, be prepared to try to find a case for that jam. Uh, you're going to need to find a case for both, but finding one for that is going to be a little harder. Uh, if you're someone who wants a bunch of options, needs the stability of the Evertune, then the EC is probably your jam. So uh, that's it. That's all this one. I want to say thank you to you for watching. I hope you've been enjoying this series. It seems like the first video is uh, getting your attention and people seem to be interacting and having conversations about it. And I think that's awesome. I'm really excited to be doing these videos. I want to say thank you to the fine folks at Zounds yet again for allowing me the opportunity to try out these instruments and to kind of give you my honest feedback. There will be links in the description to purchase these if you're interested. Um, there's also some just general affiliate links there or there's an affiliate link there that's just in general if you just want to go search Zounds, you purchase anything, I get a tiny little drop of whatever you purchase and that helps keep the channel afloat and helps keep content like this going. It's a great way to support it if you're someone who is interested in it and you enjoy the channel. And um, if you don't, that's okay too. I, I'm, I understand. I'm equal opportunity here. You can like it. You can hate it. I'm good with it all. Uh, but yeah, if you decide you want to get something on Zounds, feel free to use that affiliate link. Hey, bookmark the affiliate link. And every time you go to Zounds and order something, you can order it through there. Now, pennies, Fractions of pennies will come to me, and over time, those fractions of pennies will allow me to improve my studio situation. That is the goal. Outside of that, I just want to make some cool, fun, interesting videos for you and for myself. I'm getting to try some really cool stuff. So thanks to all of you. Thanks to Zounds for allowing this to take place. And I can't wait to come at you with another one. I'm going to have two really cool guitars for the next video as well. See you guys soon.